Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I didn't really know what to make a video about, so I just thought I'd make a quick video about the Helix text editor. So without further ado, uh, let's get into it. Alright, so I'm going to go to a program I'm making, and I'm going to just show you... So actually first, um, uh, Helix is a Vim like text editor. It has some Kakoon aspects and it does have slightly different keybinds in Vim, but I would actually say its keybinds are better. Like for example in Vim, uh if I like go into insert mode and start typing, in Vim I'd press U to undo and control R to redo. In Helix it's actually U to undo, shift U to redo which I think actually makes more sense. Um, also, uh, to select an entire line, you do X, and then like you can press D to delete and also copy it, um, and then Y will yank it. So like instead of doing YY or DD in something like Vim, I, I don't know, it just makes more sense to me. Uh, you can also control, you, you can also, like, do macros. So, for example, let me start recording a macro. Um, so, I'm going to press Shift Q, and you can see that it opened a new register. And I'll talk a little more about registers in a little bit. So, this register is at the at symbol. So, what I'm going to do is move over a little bit, uh, delete some characters and put some square brackets, some minuses, some equal signs, and some of these. And then I'm going to go to the beginning of that, and I'm going to press Shift Q once again. Now, every time I press Q, it's going to repeat that. So if I press Q again, you can see it's actually repeating what I just did, which is kind of cool. So I can... Um, record macros. So this is useful for like for example if I have mal formatted text so like I can do um uh, I don't know I'm just gonna make something off the spot. O um minus P equals Z and say I have a few of these too. So like uh Q I uh Q I minus or plus L P equals one say I don't like how these are formatted and these of course are just nonsense examples but like I'll, I'll do one more as well um, I uh, o I divided by l1x equals um, five I don't know just some random nonsensical things but I I want like these bottom digits to be next to the equal sign. So what I can do is I'm going to go to this last one here and I'm going to format it with a macro. So I'm going to press shift Q to start recording a macro. And what I'm going to do is go into insert mode and delete that and put a space. And then I'm going to go up to this next one and press shift Q to uh, finish recording. So now when I press Q, it will do that same thing. It will repeat the exact same actions. Um, so that is super cool. And I use this feature a lot. Uh, next, Helix actually has um, some cool features that... So people complain that Helix doesn't yet have plugin support. It's getting plugin support sometime in the future. They're working on it, but... One thing I've noticed is the things Vim users usually get plugins for are just in Helix already. So, um, uh, for example, I have this context menu. I can see commands, and I can tab through them to see what there is. And, like, I can press Q to quit, Q exclamation to quit without writing. You know, it's quit the same way as Vim. Um... But here's something that's kind of cool. Uh, if you try and do Helix on a directory, and by the way, the command is hx if you install Helix. It's a little weird, but I like it because it's short. 
if you helix on a directory, you get this finder. And it's also recursive, too. So, um, what I use this for is, like, if I go into one of the programs that I'm working on in my Rust directory, um, I can edit hx src and now I can choose a source file to work on and it does have syntax highlighting in this finder which is extremely cool and um, also so like if I press enter on one of these so main.rs for example I've got my code and then if I actually want to open another file I can do uh, command mode o and then I can choose another file, and I can also blow up this font size. Um, so I want to edit cli.rs. Bam, I'm in cli.rs. And if I make any changes to main.rs without saving, then I open cli.rs. Um, I qu quit writing changes in cli.rs. It will actually tell me to also write main.rs. So there's no data loss. Um, yeah. And I recommend, so, uh, I recommend going through the HX tutor, and you can do that by going into command mode and entering tutor. And this is a really nice tutorial because Helix has a few differences, but it's nothing major. It's a bunch of minor differences. So, like, you use uh, HJKL to move around. Um, exiting Helix, it's the same as Vim, and it's kind of nice that they put this exiting Helix as the second one under moving, of course. Uh, deletion, uh, you can, so, okay, type the D key to delete the character under the cursor, and, yeah. So, I highly recommend going through this Helix tutorial by yourself, it is a tiny bit long, so that's why I'm not going to do it here in this video, because I want to keep this video kind of short. Maybe 14 minutes or uh, 14 minutes max. Uh, hopefully 10 minutes or so. So I'm not going to go through this entire thing. It's not too long. I'd say it's maybe like 800 lines long. And that's just the file. As you can see, when I stopped scrolling through it, I was already more than, a f more than 500 lines through. So I highly recommend going through the tutorial. Hey, it's me again. I was editing this video and I realized that throughout the entire video in my original run, I actually forgot to mention what buffers are. Uh, a buffer is basically where data is stored in Helix. And what's cool about buffers is you can actually use multiple buffers together. So I forgot the keybinds and stuff, so if you want to learn more about buffers, it's mentioned in the HX, it, in the, the Helix Tutor, with the he, Helix Tutor command, um, like, uh, it's in Helix command mode tutor, and what buffers are is basically, uh, like, if I copy text, in Helix, it will go to the default buffer, but then I can load up a new buffer and copy some more text. And then what I can do is with those two different buffers, I can switch between them and copy the two different texts. So I can essentially have two clipboards uh, with two buffers. And buffers are heavily used in Helix. They basically store every single type of data in Helix. So you can do a lot of powerful stuff with buffers but yeah that that was just editing me now it's back to my original run so yeah i just wanted to mention buffers now uh see you enjoy the original run um also it, like i can actually demonstrate with sudo hx so it runs as root uh the default helix theme is hideous uh and you can see that it's purple it's gross it's not fun to look at you can actually change this so in if i go to config helix you'll see that i have a config.toml and this is what's in my config which another thing that's really nice about helix is the configuration file can be very very short so helix has some built-in configuration files 
Uh, and so I, I'm actually using a custom, so built-in theme files. I'm using a custom theme called grevbox underscore transparent, and this is just based on the standard grevbox theme that comes with Helix. So if I ls themes here in my config, you can see I've got my grevbox underscore transparent dot toml. So that means I can actually figure out where the default Helix themes are with sudo find uh, in root iname grovbox dot toml. And what this will do is it will search my file system for grovbox dot toml. And it may take a little bit. Yeah, this will definitely take a little bit. All right. I'm going to list this directory. And you can see these are all the um, standard themes in Helix. It's a lot of them. So it's really easy to get a nice looking Helix out of the box. So I'm going to show you what the standard Grovebox theme looks like. So if I uh, hxconfig.toml and I change grovbox underscore transparent to just grovbox, I can actually do a config dash reload in config mo uh, in command mode, and this will reload the config. And as you can see, the background went opaque, um, and yeah, so that's the opaque theme. So if I um, go back to something that has a little bit more code so I can demonstrate. Uh, this is, it's um, very much opaque. And I personally didn't like it, so I, I chose to make the background transparent. So, I'm gonna go back. Also, sorry if this video is a tiny bit rambly. I'm a bit scatterbrained right now. But yeah, okay. And I can show you some other themes too. So like uh, if I go to config.toml, um, pop dark, I believe, is a theme. Yeah, so this would be like what you would want to use on pop OS, for example. But I'm going to go back to Grovebox Transparent. And yeah, and again, uh, so I'll have all the links in the description, and I I will have so okay. Um, if I go to my browser, I go to helix-editor.com, and I'll have this in the description. Description, and again, I I don't really like this color scheme, but. Um, if I go to, I believe, documentation, and I go to uh, configuration, um, it's actually quite straightforward. So, uh, docs.helix-editor.com slash configuration.html, and it's very straightforward. It tells you, like, all the options you have, uh, you know. So, I really recommend looking at this text editor. It is truly amazing. And, um, yeah, so I'm going to start wrapping up this video now. So, uh, all links in the description. Uh, subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Odyssey. Um, uh, ring the bell so that you get all the notifications. Leave a comment. Tell me how I did. Um, I've got a Discord server. I've got a Matrix server slash space. I've got a Revolt server. All those links are on my website, which I will also link down in the description. It's just like on the front page. You don't have to do any digging. But yeah, so Revolt server, Discord server, Matrix server. Uh, my official, like my flagship 
My preferred one is my Matrix server. Uh, but yeah, without further ado, I will see you in the next one. Uh, bye. Also, follow me on Mastodon.